In a world driven by e-commerce giants, one company's journey from success to controversy has captured the attention of the global marketplace. Join us on a gripping exploration of Rakuten, Japan's largest e-commerce firm, as we look at the controversies and challenges that have shaped its path. This video uncovers the untold stories behind a multinational powerhouse. Rakuten was founded in 1997 by Hiroshi Mikitani and quickly established itself as a major e-commerce company in Japan. Originally known as Rakuten Ichiba, it began as an online marketplace, connecting buyers and sellers in a wide range of product categories. Over the years, Rakuten expanded its operations and ventured into various sectors beyond e-commerce. It aggressively pursued acquisitions to diversify its business portfolio. Some notable acquisitions include Buy.com in the United States, Play.com in the UK, and Price Minister in France. Rakuten's growth extended beyond traditional e-commerce as it entered sectors such as finance, telecommunications, and digital content. It acquired Viber, a popular messaging app, and invested in Lyft, the ride-hailing service, showcasing its ambition to become a global tech conglomerate. In the fall of 2004, Rakuten made a significant move by venturing into the world of sports. It established its own baseball team, the Tohoku Rakuten Golden Eagles, capitalizing on the popularity of the sport in Japan and adding another lucrative revenue stream to its diverse portfolio of holdings. Unlike many companies that assemble a sizable board of advisors, Rakuten follows a different approach. Currently, the sole member of the advisory board is none other than the founder and CEO himself, Hiroshi Mikitani. With a deep understanding of the company's needs and a proven track record of success, Mikitani's leadership and guidance have proven to be sufficient in driving Rakuten towards its established goals. This unique structure highlights the trust and confidence placed in Mikitani's leadership abilities and his ability to steer the company in the right direction. Rakuten's streamlined advisory board reflects a company built on a strong foundation of leadership and strategic decision-making, with Mikitani at the forefront guiding the company's path to continued success. Today, Rakuten holds a prominent position in the e-commerce industry, with a vast network of merchants and customers worldwide. Its brand presence and strategic partnerships have allowed it to compete with giants like Amazon and Alibaba, solidifying its status as a key player in the online marketplace. However, behind its success lies a series of controversies that have put its ethical practices under scrutiny. As the curtain lifts on the world of e-commerce, Rakuten, Japan's largest e-commerce firm, finds itself caught in a whirlwind of controversies that have left its reputation hanging by a thread. Join us as we delve into the captivating stories that lie beneath the surface of this global giant. It all began with the launch of the highly anticipated Kobo Touch e-reader, a device that promised to revolutionize the reading experience. But instead of delighting customers, it left them frustrated and betrayed. Technical glitches rendered the device inoperable, and angry consumers took to Rakuten's platform to vent their frustrations, leaving a trail of scathing one-star reviews in their wake. In an unexpected twist, Rakuten disabled product reviews altogether, raising eyebrows and fueling doubts about transparency and accountability. But that was just the first act. When the Kobo e-bookstore made its grand entrance, boasting a library of 30,000 Japanese titles, it turned out to be a charade. The actual number of available titles fell woefully short, leaving consumers feeling deceived and misled. The Consumer Affairs Agency swiftly intervened, accusing Rakuten of violating product misrepresentation laws and applying pressure on the company to make amends. Rakuten issued an apology, but the damage to its reputation had already been done. As the plot thickened, reports emerged of Rakuten pressuring vendors to artificially inflate prices, creating the illusion of irresistible sales and discounts. This manipulation not only enraged customers, but also attracted the attention of regulatory authorities. The Consumer Affairs Agency once again intervened in response to Rakuten's actions, condemning them as a violation of product misrepresentation laws and demanding corrective action. In an attempt to distance itself from direct culpability, Rakuten offered an apology while acknowledging the involvement of some employees in promoting these inflated prices. 
Furthermore, reports and investigations have brought to light Rakuten's alleged use of offshore tax havens and subsidiary structures to navigate the treacherous waters of tax obligations. The company has been accused of strategically establishing subsidiaries in countries with low tax rates, allowing it to divert profits and minimize its tax liabilities. These subsidiaries, often nestled in notorious offshore tax havens, serve as hidden channels through which Rakuten reroutes incomes and assets, shielding them from higher tax jurisdictions. One particular hotbed of controversy is Rakuten's operations in Luxembourg, a haven for those seeking favorable tax treatment. In this secretive domain, Rakuten's Luxembourg subsidiary, Rakuten Europe SARL has managed to generate substantial profits while paying what many consider to be a mere pittance in taxes. Unraveling the intricate web of corporate structures and intercompany transactions reveals Rakuten's calculated moves to optimize its tax position. While some argue that these practices may be within legal boundaries, they have ignited passionate debates about fairness and the ethical boundaries of aggressive tax planning. But the drama didn't end there. Rakuten found itself entangled in a controversy that reached far beyond its e-commerce empire. The company was accused of participating in the sale of illegal products, specifically whale meat and elephant ivory. The Environmental Investigation Agency exposed Rakuten as the leading online retailer of these illicit items, triggering global outrage and demands for immediate cessation. Feeling the pressure, Rakuten publicly announced the discontinuation of online sales of whale and dolphin meat. However, doubts persisted regarding the company's commitment to ethical business practices. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, Rakuten's labor practices were thrust into the spotlight, casting a shadow over its treatment of workers. Reports surfaced of poor working conditions, grueling hours, and inadequate wages. Workers in distribution centers and warehouses spoke out about the stress and demanding environments they endured. Protests erupted, fueled by labor unions and advocacy groups, demanding fair treatment, reasonable compensation, and improved working conditions. Legal battles ensued as lawsuits were filed, seeking justice for alleged labor violations. In the midst of these controversies, Rakuten's founder, Hiroshi Mikitani, faced his own personal storm. Financial difficulties in Rakuten's mobile business, doubts among shareholders about investment decisions, and the impending listing of the company's online bank created a perfect storm of challenges. Just when Mikitani needed a respite, a video emerged capturing him in a nightclub pouring champagne into the mouth of a partygoer. The timing couldn't have been worse as public scrutiny intensified and doubts about his leadership skills began to circulate. The controversies surrounding Rakuten have elicited various reactions from the public, stakeholders, and advocacy groups. Labor unions, consumer watchdogs, and other relevant organizations have voiced their concerns and criticisms, shedding light on the importance of public scrutiny and accountability for multinational corporations like Rakuten. Consumer watchdogs and advocacy groups have also voiced their concerns regarding Rakuten's controversies. They've called for transparency and ethical practices, urging the company to address issues such as tax avoidance and offshore practices. These organizations have emphasized the need for multinational corporations to be accountable not only to their shareholders, but also to the wider society and communities they operate in. The public's response to Rakuten's controversies have been varied, with individuals expressing their opinions through social media, online forums, and public discussions. Some have even expressed disappointment and skepticism towards the company's practices, while others have called for boycotts or alternative choices that align with their values. These reactions highlight the significance of public scrutiny and accountability for multinational corporations. In an interconnected world, where information flows freely and consumer awareness is heightened, companies are increasingly held to higher standards by the public and stakeholders. The controversies surrounding Rakuten serve as a reminder that ethical conduct, fair treatment of workers, and responsible businesses practices are not only crucial for maintaining public trust, but also for long-term sustainability and success. Rakuten has responded to the controversy surrounding its business practices through a series of initiatives and measures aimed at addressing the concerns raised. Regarding the allegations of tax avoidance and offshore practices, Rakuten has maintained that its plan tax planning strategies are lawful and compliant with relevant regulations. The company has stated that it operates within the bounds of the law and takes its tax obligations seriously. 
However, Rakuten has not provided specific details about any changes or initiatives implemented in response to these allegations. While Rakuten has made efforts to address some of the concerns raised, the effectiveness and impact of these initiatives are subject to ongoing scrutiny and evaluation. The company's response to the controversies will continue to be assessed by stakeholders, labor unions, and consumer watchdogs to ensure that it meets the expectations of responsible corporate behavior. Considering Rakuten's controversies, which factor has a more significant impact on its long-term sustainability, consumer trust, or regulatory scrutiny? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to support our channel.